ace of nothing. Um, but I can't stop eating. I don't know if all that hunger has made me eat all this food in this strange, anxious way, but it's not right. <laughs> The next day, she has a worrying confession to make to Dr. LaRue. I would have to say that I have been playing around with laxatives a little bit, mm -hmm. and um, it's not, <laughs> not good. I, a, it's not good, and B, it does not work. It really messes your head up as well. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, because all what you're doing is you're increasing your bowel frequency. And because your body is so hungry for nutrients, that it'll actually absorb most of your nutrients very high up mm. in your small bowel. So even using laxatives, you know, it's not going to get rid of the calories. Okay, so it's useless. It's useless, and okay. you're just, just punishing. Damaging. You're punishing yourself for nothing. Yeah, I'm. To be honest with you, I've been there, and I don't want to go back. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Later that night, Kate realises Dr. LaRue is starting to become concerned. He sent an email to um, the psychiatrist at um, Imperial College. Further to our discussion on the telephone, I would be grateful if you would review Kate Spicer. She describes her eating pattern as becoming chaotic. She has not had any episodes of vomiting, but she is showing early signs of losing control over her eating behaviour. I would be most grateful for your opinion as regards psychiatric diagnosis. So, <laughs> I guess that means I'm developing something approaching an eating disorder. I had a look at some pro-anorexia sites the other day. They were just awful. Just pictures, just to scroll down, just pictures and pictures and pictures of girls just like flaunting their bones, basically. How does it make you feel? Um, and then um, you've got the Vicky Emperson thing. Do I know for a bit of a sense? Um, um, <laughs> I just get quite upset when I think about <laughs> what people are putting themselves through. Normally Louise is so on the ball, she's slowed down to such an extent that actually all she can think about is food. Um, there was an example the other day, she was reading an interview with somebody and they referred to somebody being as different as chalk and cheese. Um, and she said, oh, I really love a piece of cheese and that's it's ridiculous the extent that she can't really disassociate everything from what she can't eat um, but I think having seen her over the last few weeks I would not employ somebody who was like that it's the end of week four and Kate's binging episodes have had a big impact on her weight loss Louise meanwhile is seeing consistent results on her protein shake diet Kate's weight has actually crept up. She's gone from 9 stone 1 to 9 stone 4, gaining 3 pounds. This decreases her total weight loss to 1 stone. Louise has gone from 8 stone 7.5 pounds down to 8 stone 5, a total weight loss of 12 pounds. On the suggestion of Dr. LaRue, Kate has agreed to visit a psychiatrist specialising in disordered eating. Spotting an opportunity to burn a few more calories, she decides to jog there. Having this constant stress about weight, appearance of food is just literally about to tip me over the edge. Um, so my name's Dr Norman Poole, I'm a psychiatrist. 
and I've been asked to see you today just to find out how you, your mental state is at the moment and okay. how that has been affected by the dieting. Yeah. Okay. So maybe to begin with, I can ask you, do you have any sort of symptoms of anxiety, tingling in the fingertips, sort of uh, uh, butterflies in the stomach? Yeah. Yeah. And are you spending more time thinking about yeah. food? Yeah. When you do eat, do you play with your food at all? Yeah. In what way? Well, I eat very slowly. I went for lunch with a guy the other day, and in the end, he went, I'm sorry, Kate, I'm going to have to leave you to eat on your own because you're eating so slowly. Right. How long did it take you to eat that meal? I didn't finish it because it took me so long and I was embarrassed, so I just left it. <laughs> and was there any other reason that you left the meal? Well, I wanted to eat it all. I mean, I, I wanted to eat it all, but I don't know what's too much. Well, everything's too much now. Mm. And it frightens me and it makes me think that I'm, um, like greedy or something. You feel greedy just for eating? And even though you're eating much smaller amounts? I'm not eating much smaller amounts, I'm eating too much. You, you, you don't purge afterwards? You don't no. Do well, you I, I was purging with, with laxatives. I was doing that whenever I felt like I'd eaten too much. But so then I spoke to the doctor last week and he said, that's pointless, you'll you're still have absorbed all the calories from it, so mm. I've stopped doing it. The anxiety that you have around food, when did that first emerge? Boarding schools, 600 boys, 60 girls, girls quite competitive with each other. How did you <laughs> cope with all of that pressure? I definitely overate, <laughs> got quite fat. Uh -huh. <laughs> it was like the worst possible thing was to be a big girl at a boys boarding school. Kate, it would appear to me that the dieting has clearly triggered um, some of your early experiences around food. So it, it does seem as if it's actually brought on binging and purging. I haven't been, yeah, to an extent. Yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah. It would appear to me that you're not suffering with anorexia nervosa or bulimia nervosa, but if you continued to diet in the way that you are dieting, you probably would become fully bulimic. Really? I would think so. I can't imagine that at the age of 37 that I would be that stupid. I can't believe that that would happen to me. I'm not that happy with the way that went because I just look like I've got an eating disorder now. When the truth of the matter is, I really like food, exercise keeps me sane, and yeah, to some extent, my relationship between food and exercise is a bit crazy, but I'd rather have that than be fat. The following day, Kate hasn't quite realised the implications. Oh, don't shoot the messenger. But you're not going to be able to carry on. Because Dr. Paul oh. said you have to stop. But the point is, it's a fucking experiment. That's where your head gets to when you impose rules on yourself, when you obsess over your body. That's where you get to, you know? And that's what I was doing. And, um, and I was, I braced myself for this, and I knew it was going to happen, and I kind of. That's what I wanted to do. I wanted to explore it in its sort of mucky, emotional reality rather than just like, oh, I'm hungry. I'm weak. I can't concentrate. We all know that. You know, it's just annoying. It's annoying for me as a journalist not to be able to explore that. <laughs> as this five-week experiment comes to an end, just how many dress sizes has Louise actually dropped? I'm in. <laughs> This feels really weird. It looks like there's absolutely nothing of you. After five weeks, the experiment to get to size double zero is over. Journalist Louise Burke is the only one who's gone all the way, but at some personal cost. I'm really, really excited. <laughs> I just, I can't, I'm going to say I can't wait. She's throwing a party to celebrate the end of what's been a miserable journey and to find out how many dress sizes she's actually dropped. These are a size 12 jeans, which is what I 
kind of started at. <laughs> Still to do things. Still bad. Still bad. <laughs>